A fake asylum seeker who's not only fraudulently claiming benefits at home, but also abroad, using a dual identity. All telephone calls made are recorded and we can tell that it was the same person. Meet Amina Muse. This 40-year-old lady turned to the UK for help in June 2003, asking for asylum for herself and her five kids. The horrific story of her family's life back home in Somalia ensured she was granted asylum here in 2004. This enabled her to claim a variety of benefits from the Department for Work and Pensions, Camden Council and Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. It's good to know that our welfare state is there for people like Amina and her children in their hour of need. Unfortunately, not everyone our country extends its generosity to is quite what they seem. And Amina may have cheated us all out of more than a quarter of a million pounds. Steve Thompson is a fraud investigator for the Department for Work and Pensions. In 2009, Amina's case landed on his desk. We received a tip off uh, anonymously through our benefit fraud hotline. The caller told us that um, not only was she claiming benefits under uh, the name of Amina Muse that we knew her as, but she also had a Swedish identity of Ayan Abdullah, that she was also claiming benefits in that name in the United Kingdom but also she was claiming benefits in the name of Abdullah in Sweden for herself and her children. Whoever this anonymous caller was, they weren't shy about dishing the dirt on Amina. The accusations kept coming. So the information that we got was quite detailed. Um, for example, it gave us the different names of the identities of the different children. Um, it gave us details of bank accounts in Sweden. Um, it also gave us national insurance numbers, dates of birth. Um, which led us to believe that there was quite, you know, there was a lot in this fraud allegation. In fact, the information was so detailed, it could only have been a family member or close friend who was making these accusations against Amina. Steve and his team start pulling together everything they can relating to Amina Muse's case. She didn't actually um, arrive on a plane and, and, and make a claim for asylum at an airport. She walked into an immigration office in London and uh, said that she had been dropped off in London by an agent from Kenya and that um, she wanted to claim asylum for herself and her children. The reason for her claim to asylum in the UK doesn't make for easy listening. The story that she told to the, to the immigration authorities was that her niece had been uh, raped in front of her that herself had been gang raped and that also one of her brothers had been killed in front of her. Um, it was quite a horrific tale that um, she told and obviously she feared persecution if she returned to Somalia. Despite the horrendous but plausible story behind her asylum application, it was originally turned down. But after an appeal, Amina and her kids were allowed to stay in the UK. When someone claims asylum, if they are granted leave to remain in the United Kingdom, i.e. Their, their asylum claim is accepted, then they can claim Social Security benefits. The first benefit that she claimed was her income support for herself and her children, for housing benefit to pay her rent, um, child benefit for her children, a disability living allowance made a claim as a carer for her son, tax credits for herself and her children, so in all, she was receiving six benefits. Fair enough if Amina's story is legit, but now Steve has the job of working out whether there is any truth to the allegations that Amina Muse is using another identity, that of Ayan Abdullah, with which to claim yet more benefits in both the UK and Sweden. The first thing that I did was I obtained the claim forms in both identities for Muse and Abdullah and could see that we had current claims uh, by both identities with their children. So, let's do the maths. That's two times six loads of different benefits. I think you can work out the rest. At this stage of the investigation, these are still allegations, and Ayan Abdullah could be a completely different person. 
Steve gets down to the nitty gritty and looks into the background of Abdullah, who the anonymous tip-off had said was originally from Sweden. I and Abdullah was able to claim benefits in the United Kingdom because she had Swedish identity documents. She's a European citizen, so she was able to claim for herself and her children. She was able to provide uh, passports for herself and her children to satisfy us that she was a Swedish citizen. She was also had to pass a test to prove that she lived in the United Kingdom, which she did, so she was awarded these benefits. Once again, like the asylum claim in the name of Amina Muse, Abdullah's arrival from Sweden could be above board, as long as they're two different people. Steve uses a tried and tested method to discover the truth and get a definitive answer on Amina and Abdullah. All telephone calls made to the Department of Work and Pensions and Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs are recorded in certain circumstances. So I was able to um, get those telephone calls for both identities and listen to them and we can tell that it was the same person making the telephone calls in both different names. This is the strongest lead so far that the allegations against Amina Muse, aka Ayan Abdullah, are real. But the team knows they will need more evidence to sort this potential scrounger out. All the claim forms were sent to a handwriting expert. So the department's claim forms, the claim forms from Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, the claim forms from the Camden Council were sent to this handwriting expert who could tell me that the handwriting for both sets of identities was written by one person. So we obtained uh, bank account details for Mrs. Muse and for Abdullah. And we can tell, for example, that um, Amina Muse um, was consistently using uh, Brecknock uh, Post Office in Camden. And then when I checked the same bank accounts um, for Abdullah, I could see on the same day that um, she was also using the same post office and withdrawing her benefits at the same time. And as if that wasn't enough. From the bank accounts for Ayn Abdullah, I can also see that she was buying um, items off these TV stations that sell over air. Um, and when I contacted them, they could tell me that the items purchased in the name of Abdullah were actually being delivered to the address of Amina Muse. It's all pretty damning stuff, and the bank statements revealed yet another layer to this scrounger's scam. Flights to and from Sweden. Steve decides it's time this case went international. The Swedish authorities are only too happy to help Steve snare this scrounger. We were able to contact the, the authorities in Sweden that are able to give us details when they had actually visited her in Sweden. In 2009, DWP investigators received an anonymous tip-off about a Somalian asylum seeker called Amina Muzain, who came to live in London in 2004. The caller alleged Amina was using two identities to claim multiple benefits for herself and her five children. But that wasn't all. But she also had a Swedish identity of Ayan Abdullah, that she was also claiming benefits in that name in the United Kingdom but also she was claiming benefits in the name of Abdullah in Sweden for herself and her children. DWP fraud investigator Steve Thompson set about trying to unravel this complex case. The evidence against Amina Muse and her alter ego Ayan Abdullah came thick and fast and was pretty damning stuff. Um, all telephone calls made are recorded and we can tell that it was the same person. The handwriting for both sets of identities was written by one person. The items purchased in the name of Abdullah were actually being delivered to the address of Amina Muse. Steve now believes Amina and Abdullah are indeed the same person and the benefit fraud could run into hundreds of thousands of pounds. He decides the case against her has to go international. The accusation that she is still also claiming benefits in Sweden needs to be cleared up. Her bank account showed that there were some flights to Sweden um, and also we were able to contact the, the authorities in Sweden that were able to give us details when they had actually visited her in Sweden. So we knew that she was flying between London and Sweden. By talking to the Swedish authorities, the team discovers Ayan Abdullah is indeed claiming benefits there as well. 
The flights discovered on her UK bank statements matched up to the date when the Swedish benefits officials had visited her at her address in their country. But the evidence doesn't stop there. When my colleague contacted the authorities in Sweden, he was able to obtain copies of the Swedish passports for Ayn Abdullah and her children. Uh, these obviously included photographs, which we was able to match with the photographs that were held on her asylum applications in the United Kingdom. And those photos in the asylum application were, you guessed it, made under the name Amina Muse. The Swedes also confirm she now owes them around £50,000 in falsely claimed benefits. After months of investigation, Muse. Uh, we went to Amina Muse's house and uh, with the police and we had a search warrant that was issued by the court. Uh, we went into the house and then we started to search the house for documents. Steve was looking for hard evidence of Amina's dual identities, but what he found first was hardly the home of a refugee who had fled her country with nothing. Uh, the house had uh, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, and two living rooms and a kitchen downstairs. Uh, the house was fairly well furnished. Um, there was lots of um, playstations. Um, there was TVs in most of the bedrooms. Um, we found a lot of clothes and jewellery for uh, Mrs. Muse. I got the impression from looking around the house that she was living a lifestyle. Passports from Sweden for the children. In the name of Abdullah, we found uh, a Swedish identity card in the name of Ian Abdullah. We found documents um, from Sweden, from the Social Security Office in Sweden. And we also found um, a number of documents for the, the false claims that she made in the name of Abdullah in the United Kingdom. We found lots of documents for Ian Abdullah in the house for Amina Muse. And of course, we wouldn't expect to find those documents unless they were the same person. Muse was arrested and taken for interview. Her six-year scam finally at its end. Despite the overwhelming evidence against her, this scrounger stood her ground. In her interview under caution, she mainly went no comment to the questions that we asked her. But she did maintain throughout her interview that her true identity was Amina Muse. The name she'd come from Sweden with, Ayan Abdullah. During the 10 day trial, she tried everything to shift the blame from herself. During the trial, Amina Muse slightly changed her story and she made further false allegations against myself, saying that I was also involved in planting documents in her house with her husband. Yet another lie to add to a very long list, but there was more to come. Despite the overwhelming evidence against her, Ayan Abdullah refused to acknowledge this name as her real identity. She maintained throughout that she was Amina Muse, a refugee from Somalia. It was this side of her defence that angered Steve the most, as the prosecution were to prove that her story of rape and persecution in Somalia was fake. We were able to obtain from Sweden the birth records for Ayan Abdullah which showed that she was actually in hospital having a baby at the same time that she said she was being raped in Somalia. It was quite horrific that she was using these stories, these atrocities that allegedly happened to her in Somalia to cynically exploit the asylum system in the United Kingdom to obtain benefits, bearing in mind that there are many genuine asylum seekers who have generally faced these atrocities in their own countries. No matter what lies still spilled from Ayan Abdullah's lips, her scrounging ways had caught up with her. The jury took just two hours to find her guilty of guilty all 23 charges against her. The judge sentenced Ayan Abdullah in the name of Ayan Abdullah because he accepted along with the jury that that was her real identity. He sent her to jail for four and a half years. I was very pleased with that result. That's one of the longest jail sentences that the Department of Work and Pensions has achieved in one of their investigations. Ayan Abdullah 
actually stole £261,000. This is one of the largest amounts of fraud that I've had to deal with in my